Let's go to Ethan, who's on the line in Joplin, Missouri. Ethan, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. How are you, Ethan? Um, oh, well, Good. I like you always say, I'm living the dream, except my problem is it's someone else's dream. Uh-oh. Well, let's fix <laughs> I, uh, that. <laughs> I I want to change styles. I'm not happy where I'm at. I mean, it's it's changed my kind of changed my whole personality too. And I've noticed it, but to change jobs, I'm going to have to cut my salary almost in half. I think I'm afraid. Well, wait a second. What, what am I missing here? <laughs> You're telling me you have to take a 50% pay cut to make the next step forward towards the dream. Yeah. I well, I'm PE teaching. I used to, I used to be a PE teacher and then I said, well, I need more money. So then I switched to be a state trooper. And then from there, I didn't like the schedule, so I now sell insurance. And so the, the pay for insurance is quite a bit more than, than what a teacher would pay. Okay, but here's my question, though. Have you discovered that being a teacher is ultimately that dream job, lo- the work that you love that makes you come alive? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. All right, that's all I needed to know because you came at me with, boom, I'm going to have to do this. And, and it's like, well, if this is part of the deal, because you're miserable selling insurance, yes? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I hate coming to work every day. <laughs> well, that's not – so here's the deal. Let me encourage you on something. Chris Hogan, one of my colleagues here at Ramsey Solutions, did a study that fun, that basically fueled the book Everyday Millionaires. And mm-hmm. the top – I think the third largest group of millionaires – were teachers in the United States. Now, this is net worth millionaires, right? So they were teaching for a right. long time. They lived on less than they made, and they invested and saved. And even on a teacher salary, they've become net worth millionaires. So, so there's no shame in your game, number one. And number two, you can get where you want to go. You can do it. But if that's the work you love, then, yeah, you need to take the 50% pay cut. You need to adapt your lifestyle. The question is, yeah. what lifestyle changes did you make when you went to being a state trooper and then to sell an insurance? Right. Well, now my wife stays home with our with our kids, and I really don't want to make her stop doing that. <laughs> well, but again, what would you have to change for her to be able to stay home and you be able to teach? Well, I could I could work a couple other jobs too, I guess. Okay, that's <laughs> one option. We got to a better spot. Well, that's one option. But what other changes could you make? Man, I don't know. We're we've cut out everything we can. <laughs> we've okay. Got, I mean, we've got some debt. I'm a, we're on baby step two, and so I mean, right now we kind of need the money to okay to survive. Right. Now, <laughs> now we got a different change in the plan. So I'm giving you the yes to eventually going back to teaching, but I'm going to tell you it's not right now. Right. And, and you're a big boy, and you can do what it takes, can't you? And wait as long as it oh. takes. Right. Yeah. All right. Now here we go. Now this thing gets exciting. This is fun. So, yeah. how much do you make as an insurance agent right now? 60-ish. Okay. <laughs> and and how much of that do you control? Meaning you go out and sell more, you get more clients, you make more, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, but the same guy who was willing to work two or three jobs in order to be able to afford teaching, I think that guy needs to stay in insurance and bust it and get after it. Because at mm-hmm. the end of the day... I know you don't enjoy going in because there's no connection to your heart, but what if your whole mentality was, I'm getting in to get after it, to make more money than I've ever made in order to get out of debt, get a great emergency fund funded, and then save a little bit more money to ease our transition into me going back into teaching? Yeah, yeah. That would change your perspective, wouldn't it, on Monday morning? Yes, it would. Because you work for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't have yeah. any le- you don't have any problem with problems with your leader, I guess. <laughs> no, it's you. Well, I, I, right. Well, I'm a, I'm a captive agent, so I do have a I do have a boss. I just I know, you know I'm making he, jokes. I'm making but, bad jokes. Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> My point is, you can change everything you want to change when you can change it. So right now, you've got how much debt? I. Not including our house, about forty thousand. Oh, dude, you can knock the forty thousand out <laughs> pretty quick. Yeah, if you're killing it. If every time you mm-hmm. get a new insurance client, you realize that's getting me one step closer to being a teacher, and my wife getting to stay home. Come on, man, you got this. Okay. Yeah. So get after it. So here's the step. 
we're going to stay in insurance and we're going to make more than 60 and we're going to kill it. And I don't care if it takes two years for you to pay off debt plus walk Dave Ramsey's baby steps out and get that fully funded mm-hmm. emergency fund. Let's get that 15% towards retirement, maybe juice the retirement a little bit. You can hang in there for two to three years as long as mama gets to stay home with that baby and you've got a good life. You're working for yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think the teaching thing is down the road. But let's get our financial house in order so that you can take that 50% pay cut and not feel it. Okay. Now, let me ask one other crazy question. Could you, in fact, keep the insurance gig, meaning you hire an assistant, okay? Mm-hmm. And that assistant's in the office basically answering your calls, doing all your paperwork, and you continue to be the insurance agent. You do a little bit of, you know, talking with clients at, you know, late in the afternoon, uh, maybe during lunch breaks. Could you keep that insurance business going while being a full-time PE teacher? If you hired somebody to help you do the admin and a lot of the customer service. Yeah, I think that's, that's plausible. (laughs) I tell you what, buddy boy, I would think about that. What happens if that insurance agency is kind of your side hustle? I'd, That'd I'd be run, handy. <laughs> I'd run, yes, sir. I'd run the numbers on that, right? Right. Because yeah, you're the yeah. face of it. You got to do certain things, but ultimately, there's a there's a person if you paid that could do a lot of that work for you. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. now you got the money from the insurance agency, but you're doing what you love as a PE teacher. Now we got double yeah. income, and Mama's still home. Right. And you're debt like free. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I may have just made your day, Ethan. I think you made me a little happier. <laughs> I think so. I think that's something you need to look into. I would try to do both. Because, listen, being a PE teacher is not the most stressful job in the world. So I think you could balance both and not be stressed out at all. Now, you have to pay somebody. But even after right. paying somebody, you're still making double income. Because yeah. in- insurance is about relationships and renewals. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Mm, buddy, I'd build that business for two, three years, and then I'd, I'd hire somebody to keep it going. That's what I'd do. 